Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Vardaman Textile Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Bhatliwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Nigam from Bhatliwala and Karani Securities, India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Vardaman Textiles Q1 FY23 earnings conference call. And uh, from the management team, we are joined today by Mr. Neera Jain, who is the Joint Managing Director, Mr. Sushil Jam, Director Raw Materials, Mr. Rajiv Thapar, uh, CFO, Mr. Mukesh Bansal, Senior Vice President, Fabric Marketing, and uh, Mr. Varun Malhotra, Head of Finance. And without any further delay, I'll hand it over to management for opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the call. Uh, we have already declared the results, which I'm sure all of you would have seen gone through by this time. So, First quarter has still been reasonably okay because of a couple of reasons. One, I think every factory had some cotton available to them, which was very good uh, where the prices have not gone to the peak. Also, there were pending contracts, I think, with every one, which were getting executed in this period. So as a result of that, and they were generally on a higher prices basis. So as a result of that, I think the margins were also better. Three, the situation kept uh, on becoming... Uh, uh, challenging and I think uh, May, June, July things were becoming more difficult or uh, more challenging as the time passed. So the first number, first quarter number still re looks reasonably okay and the situation after that is that uh, the prices internationally, cotton prices started coming down and we saw an inverse of almost 25-30 cents between July and December New York future. By the time uh, New York uh, July was over, December we started looking at uh, one the inverse. Also, the prices started coming down. Not only in cotton, but I think lots of other commodities because the overall uh, overall inflation issues, concerns, and uh, and the rate of interest we started increasing practically everywhere. We saw a peak of 155, 156 US cents. Uh, in the month of uh, June and July, and uh, after that, the as on today's prices are close to 90-92 cents uh, near of future. Of course, the physical cotton is still relatively expensive compared to this because the basis have increased in this period. So that was one where the essentially product prices started coming down. Everyone started looking at all brands, all customers started looking at the prices of cotton, cotton yarn, and all the products to go down. And then they came to the wait and watch policy rather than placing the orders because the concern was by the time the product reaches them, there would be a huge loss in the overall inventory in the system. So that's how this is, we, we look at this time. Oh, specifically to the Indian situation, the prices came down in India also. We saw a high of almost 105,000 and 6,000 rupees a candy. And from there, we came down to as on today almost 82, 83,000 rupees a candy. So it's a drop of almost 25, 30%, whereas the drop internationally is higher. So over there, we saw from 155 cents going down to about 90 US cents. The Indian cotton with 82, 83,000 rupees today is one of the costliest in the entire world. And uh, in terms of US cents, coming close to about 137, 138 US cents, whereas the international cotton available today, uh, the cost look or the cotton available internationally will be in the range of maybe about, maximum will be in the range of about 120 cents or so. So practically we are 18 to 20 US cents higher than the international prices. There are four countries which cover almost 70-80% uh, of the spinning capacity of the world. India, Pakistan, China, and Vietnam. And look at the prices in all these four countries. The 
prices of raw cotton in china will be close to about is less than 1 dollars 90 92 cents as of now the pakistani rupee uh, rupees devalued and the prices are also reasonable and if you look at the us cents prices in the range of about 90 92 cents as of now the vietnam is the third biggest and uh, the australian cotton available to them today with a 90 cents uh, uh, near of future will be in the range of about maybe uh 118 to 120 us cents whereas india because of the shortage and import we can do in this period we are still at about 138 cents and these four countries cover practically 80 75 80 percent of the spending for the entire world so as a result india has a huge disadvantage which continues carries on so are uh, we are not in a position to uh, competitive on the export market the indian spinner also started looking at rather whosoever has the cotton or whatever cotton is available they were using that and since our prices of raw material were much higher the mills took a strategy where they started looking at uh, stopping the spindles rather than buying the cotton at these prices and then uh, taking a hit but as the international price of cotton came down the yarn price got readjusted very fast uh, based upon that whereas the indian cost was higher so it was making more sense for the indian spinners to stop the spindles or to reduce the capacity rather than buying cotton at these prices as a result of that though the theoretical prices are almost 80 82000 rupees as of now per candy in india but there is hardly any deal happening this neither a buyer nor a seller at these prices and it's more of a theoretical price because of the shortage is not coming down but i think eventually uh the there is doesn't seem to be any major interest from the spinners to buy at these prices the second impact uh, of this was also based upon the future prices of, of cotton in india the october uh, not october the november december deliveries are available in india at a price of almost 64 65000 rupees a candy which is 17 18000 rupees lower than the today's price which is one clear signal that uh, the prices of, uh, of cotton are likely to come down sharply in india so as a result of that the spinners interest was not to buy uh, and uh, also the the end customer also started looking at since the prices are coming down so why should i take any position today uh, so everyone everyone was just postponing the purchase the third factor was the inflation outside india which was a big concern both the price of uh, food grains as well as gas they increased in a big way as a result of that uh, i think uh, everyone was concerned about especially the the middle segment or the lower middle segment got concerned and they were they were trying to have their budget more for the food grains as well as gas rather than looking at the textile so the overall demand of textile also came down in a big way uh, in this period it is estimated that the indian spinners almost 30 35% spinning capacity stopped and in spite of that there is hardly any demand for the yarn or other products also home textile continues to operate at about 50% capacity denim continues to operate at about 50% capacity uh, the only better uh, segment as of now is the woven fabric compared to all these products of course there is a hit there also but woven is still better <clears throat> because as the people are coming out of their uh, homes after the covid and the travel started uh, things are becoming normal for the from covid's perspective there still seems to be some demand better than denim or better than uh, home textiles as of now so this is the overall situation as far as india is concerned and uh, do as i mentioned the loss of capacity which has already been uh, stopped as of now uh, for vardhaman i think we we have also stopped maybe about 7 8 10% of our spinning capacity for the last uh, couple of weeks because uh, we also thought it prudent to to not to buy the cotton at these prices and start taking a big hit and it was making more sense to stop some capacity wherever we can especially for the 100% cotton yarns as neither there was demand uh or the demand was there but at a price which is making more loss compared to stopping the spindle so more of a commercial call which has been taken by most of the spinning mills in india 
एंड आई थिंक दिस सिचुएशन में कंटिन्यू कर अदर वन और टू मंथ्स डिपेंडिंग अपॉन हाउ फास्ट दी प्राइजेज एंड कॉटन काउंस ऑन इंडिया एंड हाउ फास्ट वी री अलाइन टू दी इंटरनेशनल प्राइजेज इफ यू लुक एट दी नवंबर प्राइजेज ऑफ सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज विच इज क्लोज टू अबाउट हंड्रेड एंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड फोर सेंट विच एज ऑन टूडे मे स्टिल बी एक्सेप्टेबल इफ यू लुक एट नाइनटी नाइनटी टू सेंट्स ऑफ New York future that means it's a it's a uh, it's a positive about 10 to 12 cents. It's over 10 to 12 cents over the New York future. So historically gap is about five six cents, but I think uh, even 10 to 12 cents should be or could be acceptable as of now. The overall export of yarn from India has come down in a big way. All products, I think, there's a drop. Uh, just to give a perspective, normally India used to export close to about 110 million kg. Per month of yarn export, which in last four months has been coming down. So from 110 we came down to 80, 70, 60, 50, and so and so on. And the last month reported figures are in the range of about 25 to 30 million kg only, which means we have dropped our exports from country almost to the extent of 80 percent or so. So which is clear signal that because of our incompatibleness, we are not in a position to export the yarn, whereas the For both the reason are cost factors and also the demand was less. But I think uh, the if, but at the same time these are some of the challenges which we are finding or facing today. The next season crop seems to be good till now. The rains are adequate in all the cotton areas, and uh, there's likely to be about five percent, five to six percent uh, area growth this year for the swing. and the <clears throat> since the rains are uh, reasonably okay in most part of the country uh, in the especially in the cotton growing areas there would be a yield improvement also and uh, it may be expected that the crop can be in the range of about 360 lakhs or so these are the uh, early estimates by the industry of course the we have to wait and watch for the exact figures to come from various agencies The last year, it looks like we are going to close down somewhere about 292, 295 lakh bales against our original estimate of 340. And uh, later on, because of the crop shortage or the crop destroyment, I think the overall both the quantity and the quality was uh, very bad in last year, which is because of the quality or because of the higher wastage it has to take. The spinner was taking more loss compared to the other parts of the world. so on uh, on a silver lining one the next year crop seems to be good two our prices are looking aligning or aligning to the international prices third i think uh, the another thing is that overall pipeline in the system is absolute em- empty and uh, whenever or wherever the customer starts understanding or the brand starts looking at that probably these are the lowest prices or these are the stable prices the demand would start may start coming up also soon the another factor the the uh, positiveness for india which started with uh, the china plus one factor both on account of zinc tank and also as a second source of uh, supply i think that factor continues to be good and uh, there doesn't seems to be any major deviation of brands from that and i think once uh, our costs are normal i'm sure there would be or could be a possibility for for india to uh, to regain the market share once again because uh, it's not only that india has lost that share i think the overall demand in the world has been much lower in this period so th- that's on the industry side and uh, specifically on vardhaman side uh, over and above the results and the situation which i have mentioned i think uh, this is a period where the industry is passing through a very difficult time so whatever expansion we announced which are yet to be uh, started as of now we have put it on hold both on account of uh, uh, the situation of the industry and also the overall uh, cost of machineries are very high still because of the supply chain issues and the machineries are not available for next 2 to 2 and a half years so we want to wait for maybe couple of months once the situation becomes normal both in terms of the business and also in terms of the availability of machinery and the cost of machinery because once the prices of all commodities have started coming down we are sure 
the prices of machinery and the availability will also start improving. So temporarily we have put it on hold as of now, and uh, I think we'll take that view soon once the normalization happens. So this is uh, on the yarn side. Mukesh, can you uh, share some of the thoughts on the woven uh, fabric, and then we can take the Q and A. Uh, yes, thank you, Neeraji. Uh, good evening, everyone. On the fabric side, if you look at uh, the Q1 was sequentially little slower as compared to Q4 last year. Um, primarily, the reason being uh, there was inventory correction happening in the Western world, primarily the US, wherein we saw a lot of pent-up demand after the lockdowns opened in Q during the uh, Q3 and Q4 last year. Um, there was you know, two, three factors to it. One was that the offices started opening. Uh, so people who were working from home, they had to go to the offices. Uh, so they need uh, uh, newer uh, uh, clothing for the office wear, whereas in the previous quarters, the demand was more for the clothing that was suitable for work from home. So the uh, brands had higher inventory of casual wear and possibly the lower inventory for the uh, uh, the, 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 the dress, more dresses, uh, fabrics. So that was one reason uh, wherein you know, there was a uh, demand and supply mismatch. The uh, right kind of stuff was not available in the stores. Second is that uh, the logistics tightening that was there before, that started easing out. So the goods which were stuck in the, at the ports, they started reaching the brands faster than they would have expected before. So all of a sudden they had you know lot of inventory so that demand correction happened during the q1 uh, year second of course as uh, neeraji mentioned the uh, commodity prices uh, uh, forced the customers not to buy as much as they were selling so which we expect now the pipeline the pipeline is relatively lesser so maybe uh, the demand will pick up as soon as the uh, uh, some correction in the demand and some correction in the prices happen. Uh, that's it from my side, sir. All right, we can start with the Q&A now. I think the remaining queries could be, uh, we can clarify as the question comes in. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Mr. Sahil Kumar Sharma. Please go ahead, sir. Mr. Sharma, your line is in talk mode, sir. Please go ahead with your question. Um, Anil Kumar Sharma, madam. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my question is on uh, uh, forward contract booking. We have booked. Uh, in US and last quarter we have provided for 61 crore. This quarter also we have provided for 41 crore, I think. And we whether we will uh, require to provide for this uh, next quarter also or that can be reversed also? Uh, no. So we have uh, already uh, won, uh, we have uh, cleared all the contracts. So the next quarter is not likely to be any negative uh, loss to that extent, or, or maybe okay, we have still some uh, puts available to us. I'm not very sure whether they'll become the positive or the negative. But the as far as the negativity is concerned, as of now, I don't think there's any likely to be any negative uh, in the next quarter. But if the cotton goes down or those puts become in money, that could be a positive. Well, it can be positive, I think, because prices are going down. Yeah, so let's see how it goes. All right. 
and my second question is at uh, what capacity we are running presently sir in the uh, yard as well as so on the spinning side as, as i mentioned we have stopped about 8 9% of our capacity whereas on the fabric side we are running more than about 80% of our capacity as of now so 80 85% capacity is uh, uh, still under existing so overall capacity utilization is not that bad for us right thank you sir The next question is from the line of Mr. Uneesh from Kotak Life. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for the excellent. Sir, I have two questions. Uh, one is more from the perspective that zinc and cotton. and we can you we can sorry we can't hear you hello, hello. mr omesh can you hello. hear me now yes sir your hello. voice is audible please go ahead with the question yeah so i have two questions one from a industry perspective post the ban ban of zinc and cotton uh, i think that has also become an act from this month itself uh, from last one and a half year since the ban is effective are we seeing some sort of more demand from uh, countries like bangladesh who were earlier procuring yarn from uh, you know china so definitely the demand from china uh, from uh, bangladesh has been good uh, mm. in the previous quarters but yes mm. as on today i think uh, uh, all parts of the world everyone is in a wait and watch situation and using their own uh, inventories so the overall demand is less even from bangladesh also for the last almost one and a half two months right that is that so, the sir, time from a world markets sure so from a structural perspective do you think this zinjian ban could actually shift the uh, you know bangladesh garment manufacturer to you know start procuring yarn from uh, india also i know i understand bangladesh is a one of the major export partner for Uh, Indian yarn manufacturing companies, uh, but that can accelerate from here on. The, if you look at last two years, the demand from Bangladesh has been quite good. They are expanding in a big way on the garmenting side. At the same time, they are not expanding that big on the spinning side. So, if they continues to do well by taking a share from Bang uh, from China, I'm sure the overall demand for yarn from Bangladesh for Indian yarn will also be good. So, right and so and sir one follow up questions uh, on this uh, is there a possibility that rather than uh, these garment manufacturer players starting uh, started to buying you know yarn from india there could be a possibility that indian uh, cotton players can start exporting raw cotton to china and then chinese player can start uh, converting cotton to yarn and then can uh, supplying it to bangladesh uh, does that uh, commercially makes viable uh not really because uh, because of two factors one the china has a import policy where it could be imported only through uh, the quota available to them and uh, they uh, normally government allows the quota from time to time and that's the maximum cotton they can buy and this has been their policy for last almost 10 to 15 years two the overall cost of manufacturing is increasing in china also so they are trying to look at more concentrating on the value added uh, side, value addition side which is the garmenting or maybe fabric so on the spinning side they are losing the interest for last 10 years just to give you a perspective the china's peak capacity uh, about 10 years back was 112 million spindles which as of now has come down to 94 million spindles so i think the overall cost structure also is not allowing them or they are not interested to look at the uh, low uh, margin industry so that's why they it looks like they may not be really very very interested for this spinning business actually so sir that's helpful uh, second question was more of a follow up from the previous questionnaire uh, uh, can you explain me the reason of uh, the hedging losses that we are reporting uh, what is the exact nature of this transaction so oh, when we were buying cotton indian cotton there was no way we could hide it because our thought process was the cotton is at a very high price 
though of course the price kept on increasing which was not uh, envisaged at that stage so when the season started or the prices were going up we had no choice than to buy indian cotton because of our consumption but uh, the mcx or the there is no mechanism by which you can hedge the indian cotton in india the only possibility is that you can hedge it on a new york future so what we were doing we were buying physical cotton and uh, we started selling on the new york future to hedge it so that uh, if the prices uh, goes down at least to that extent uh, uh, we'll have a loss on the physical cotton and we'll have a gain on the new york future at the same time if the prices goes up then we will have a loss on the new york future but at the same time we'll have a gain on the uh, on the physical cotton we had and the same thing has happened so on one hand we had a loss on uh, of uh, new york future hedges but at the same time to that extent we have a gain on the physical side also which the physical side gain will come under the our operation or the raw material cost only so that's how this hedging loss is being uh, seen separately hmm. so so how much of our inventory is generally we hedge uh, on a percentage basis sorry so how much of inventory would be hedged as of now no as of now we have not hedged anything so all the hedge contracts are closed now yeah because we as we consumed the cotton we uh, were uh, 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 cancelling the forward contracts also so we have some small puts here and there which is uh, which could be only positive now the there cannot be any loss so if the cotton goes down there could be some advantage which could come to us otherwise uh, on the the loss uh, chances are not there as of now because we don't have any forward uh, contract been uh... so uh, that's really helpful thank you thank you mr jain we take the next question from the line of riya from equitas investments please go ahead ma'am hello hello yes ma'am you are audible please go ahead with your question oh uh, yeah uh, yeah hello sir so uh, yeah actually i would like to start with the fact that uh, since the entire industry is in some headwind right now uh, i would want to send the word of capex plan for last year and uh, how has this entire industry phenomena affected it so as i mentioned the the previous capex which uh, the project had already started was continuing but the new project as of now for next couple of months we have put on hold and uh, once our cotton price in india comes down as per the internet then only actually i can't hear you hello 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 am i audible yes, now yeah yeah yes 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 sorry so whatever expansion plans which were going on that's getting completed on time and whatever the expansion plans which were we were to start we are putting on hold for a couple of months once our raw material prices uh, is in line with the international prices then only will take up this expansion okay okay i am going forward currently in the month of july do you think or oh, with the com- prices coming down to 80 to 83000 any further increment demand from the export side or it's or uh, not much like no not much because 82 83000 is almost 137 180 uh, 130 so at this we are not competitive so the overall demand we are not in a position to take uh, uh, those contracts because our cotton is on a higher prices so i think it's only uh, it looks like maybe only october or november onwards once the new arrival comes in and the physically cotton is available then only the prices will be aligned to the uh, aligning more to the uh, overall market okay and uh, of the export market how the what i what is the real life gain because of the exchange distance we had because of dollar terms invoicing like would we be getting any incremental sum of money because of that no that uh, of course uh, I mean, whenever there is a devaluation happens, that's uh, to to the extent of export realization, there'll be some advantage. But I think uh, again, the prices will keep on getting readjusted because if you look at uh, the the Chinese currency that's devaluating in this period. Look at Pakistan is from 200 rupees uh, to a US dollar; they've gone to 225 or so. 
So I think all currencies are devaluing as of now. So wherever you find a competition later on, uh, if, and if everyone is devaluing, probably that will get readjusted somewhere for the prices. Okay, so are we seeing? Do we have any long-term agreements for exports or uh, piece by piece? No, it's all piece by piece. Some so the maximum contract any customer does it today for is only for a month or two. So there is no long-term contracts on the spinning side. Ever. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you, ma'am. A reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Apurva Sharma from PGIM India. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. Uh, so I just wanted to understand correctly what uh, inventory of cotton are we carrying and at around what pricing you know would that be? You know, uh, so I'm sorry, that information we don't share with the investors. Okay. Uh, Any, I mean, matlab, is it lower than? Uh, if you can give it, uh, you know, not the exact pricing or a range, but is it lower than the current cotton price or higher, so that we get a it's sense? Almost, of, it's almost comparable. Sorry, prices are almost comparable at the current price. Okay, and sir, uh, Kispex also, uh, as you uh, you know mentioned and explained earlier in the opening remarks, we we have deferred the Kispex and we'll take a call in around two months. So, sir, uh, I mean, what is the level of? I mean, I mean, what is the benchmark that we are looking at in terms of, say, cost per spindle, or you know, anything else in terms of demand or supply scenario? That I mean, what would tempt us to? I mean, what no, would? No. Uh, it's nothing to do with that. The capex prices will come down. Only two three months. I'm looking at if our raw material prices are aligned to the international prices, which means India will also be competitive once again. So that's where we want to look at. It's not that the prices of machine will come down. That's why we are delaying it. No, it's not like that. It's the basic profitability uh, should be restored, or the margin should be normalized. Then only we'll take up these projects. Okay. Uh, why I was asking is since uh, uh, you know once we order the machinery, it takes uh, there's a lot of lead time, right? So I'm assuming obviously things will normalize in the next quarter or two. So what stops us from at, at least you know uh, maybe you know uh, altering them or you know obviously the current prices you said are high. So that was my uh, you know how I was looking at it. So no, that's true. So maybe your point is valid that once the projects are going to be commissioned only two years down the line. Yes. But still yes. going the situation we thought it to be prudent because in any case hundred thousand spindles will be. Implemented in next two to three months, which should be sufficient for us to take care of additional demand for next couple of months. So it's only two three months once the overall uh, mood of the industry becomes better, we'll start looking at it. So it's not really any permanent changes there in our thought process. I think we still can go on the overall expansion plans we have. So it's a matter of once the once the normalization happens, because it's a very challenging time, and we are also looking at. How to pass through this time uh, by making all the alternate product changes? So it is more of a sentimental as of now, rather than any any major issue or a concern. Sure, and uh, one last question. Uh, so once, uh, as we said, right, we have also shut down some spinning capacity because there is no uh, right now, you know, in terms of demand, everyone's return watch mode. So once, uh, you know, new cotton comes in and things align with international prices, and you know. So is it can it be a scenario in two three wherein you know you know everyone just starts uh, the the order uh, order thing starts and there can be a huge crush on uh, orders in terms of backlog because a lot of the capacity is down already as you mentioned around thirty thirty five percent we are down there is yeah there is a all likelihood of this scenario which you are mentioning that since the overall capacity is down the pipelines are empty suddenly once the demand comes in. There could be a possibility because of pipeline, the sudden demand can again uh, give a big push to the overall system. But uh, I think we have to wait and watch because uh, the overall capacity is down. India, 30-35 percent is the overall spinning down, and maybe another 8-10 percent people would have converted on the alternate products like 100 percent polyester, 100 percent this stuff, etc. So both the scenario you are mentioning, I will not be saying that it is impossible. There could be a possibility once the customer or the brand starts coming in, uh, the prices are normal or they are more comfortable on the raw material prices uh, for a medium term. There could be this possibility that suddenly we might find a huge demand coming in. 
Sorry, and one, I said last question, just one corollary to this, as we said, you know, 35% production is down. And, uh, you know, isn't that the case if for, say, a quarter, three, four months, we are not able to supply to our key customers, you know, uh, that demand goes away and shifts to, at least some of it shifts to some other sources or even suppliers? No, no, no. Uh, no, no. It's if you not, help me explain it, the dynamic, yeah, please. Yeah, so it's not that it is gone to some other countries. Other countries are still not losing or making some money, but the overall demand still uh, uh, the, is low because the brands are all looking at the prices to be dropped. So it's not that they are uh, they are buying more from X, Y, or Z company. They have been buying less only. And in any case, India controls almost 25-30% of the world's exports market of yarn. It's not right. possible for any other country to immediately, uh, you know, capture that demand. Okay, so so this is basically, if I understand, it is because the commodity now is all cooling off, so it's, everyone is in a wait and watch mode. That's why we are seeing what we are seeing. Right? Yeah, that's one. That's one. India specifically, uh, the cotton specifically, the Indian market is more bad because our prices are much higher than the international prices. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, indirectly the commodity is. I mean, I yeah. don't know what's happening. That's so our customers are right now secure that way because if we have shut down some capacity, they, that should not be a problem. At least the customers, per se, for the demand is okay, that can come back. But customers are intact right now, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, just to give you one another point, though I mentioned that I've stopped 8-10% capacity, but uh, just to look at that uh, financial loss should not be there because we buy cotton at a higher price and we sell at a current national price of cotton. But at the same time, Whosoever is my regular customer or is depending upon me, we are ready to take that hit. And to that extent, we are ready to buy cotton also at these prices so that the, the customer should not get suffered because that's a long-term bet we have taken. So it's only if you don't have customer or you don't have regular customers or you don't have, uh, there are some floating customers which are not coming to you. So to that extent, uh, I'm willing to stop the production. But when it comes to my regular customers, I don't think there is even a the IOTA issue or thoughts that we don't want to supply to them. Then yeah, that, that, was, that was my point. Maybe if, 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 if my point was if, we, if the customer is demanding and still we are not supplying, then that can be no, issue. No, no. But that, as you that, mentioned, that is not a we, we can take the hit. Right? Yes, we are very clear for the customer. There is no second thought. Even I mean, there is not. A, we we are, we are very clear that customer wants something. Irrespective of the cost or price, we will not leave them. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sharma. We take the next question from the line of Prerna Jinjunwala from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, just wanted to understand what is the current yarn price in the international market? In the range of about $4.10 to $4.30. Anyone's guess. And the spread would be uh, around uh, at these levels? Spread. Threat for India will be negative. Okay. And threat for Pakistan, Vietnam, Bang, uh, China would be in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the range of about uh, 90 cents or so. Okay. So, uh, um, though, you know, China plus one uh, is a very attractive opportunity for India, do you think when that said, China... But, sorry, Prerna, when I said the negative means... The margin would be negative, not the spread would be negative. Okay. Understood, sir. I got that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir, I just wanted to understand, uh, you know, that uh, because of Xinjiang cotton ban, uh, the demand for that cotton uh, has reduced considerably. Do you think that China will become uh, a cheaper source of cotton for a longer period of time uh, going forward? Any Any thoughts on that? Let's look at the total Chinese balance sheet of cotton. They consume close to about uh, 8 million tons. And out of that, uh, they import uh, almost 1.5-2 million tons. 6 million tons is there, or 5.5 million tons is there, domestic uh, production. Out of that, 80% comes from Zing there. So I think the likely scenario going forward would be that whosoever or wherever they're exporting the products, they'll have to import cotton or import yarn or use the non zingzang cotton which is available within China. The zingzang cotton will be available or will be used either for the Chinese local demand 
or for the other countries like asia middle east where they don't have these kind of restrictions so they'll have to readjust but in any case they will be net net short on the cotton or cotton yarn if they take uh, aside this india cotton for their exports only okay okay because you know uh, global consumption pattern 35% is us maybe 30 35% will be europe half of which may comply with jingjiang half of which may not uh so uh, practically 50% plus consumption area uh, for china is available for uh, jingjiang cotton which where we will be competing with them so that was the whole thought uh, that apart from us could there be a situation where china becomes cheaper than indian spinners mm, not really if our cotton because today also i mean if their their cotton is at about 95 96 97 cents if our cotton comes down to 100 300 4 i don't think really there is a big issue for that okay that that is quite comforting so so uh, yeah so next question is on the uh, fabric side you put aside the capex of uh, uh, yarn for some time um, can there be a possibility of fabric capex announcement uh, or is it under consideration uh, going forward uh, largely because we are nearing full capacity utilization uh, we near full capacity utilization in fourth quarter and eventually with improved demand that you are expecting from q3 or q4 uh due to supply chain being empty the demand for fabric will also be higher so in such scenarios do you think that uh fabric capacity expansion which takes approximately more than a year to set up should uh, yeah. could be announced uh, in yeah. your term yeah yeah so what our thought process on that is we already have a surplus fabric capacity as far as the gray fabric is concerned Okay. So we get more of a balancing equipment where this uh, 140 million, uh, 140 lakh meters per month can go to about 160 or so. So I think uh, more of uh, work will happen on the balancing or on the uh, or wherever the bottlenecking could be done, rather than uh, adding any new line as of now. Okay. Okay. And those okay. are lot of ideas, uh, lot of ideas which are already under consideration, and I'm sure. One by one, that can be implemented relatively faster. Okay. Okay. So, sir, how should we look at growth on volume terms over the next two, three years? So, our we are simply uh, talking to all the investors that please don't look at the peak utilization or average utilization has been in the range of about 100 lakh meter, 105 lakh meter last couple of quarters. So, once we are consistently using at about 140 lakh meters i think only or we are reaching to that level for couple of months then only we, we intend to look at the further expansions okay. though your point is valid it will take one year but i think that's what we feel that there should be a positive pressure on the team to utilize it fully and then only to take up the next project understood sir so that means we would be almost uh, you know less than 5% Volume growth uh, kegar for the next one two years because there is no major capacity coming up. Five percent, uh, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, since our average capacity utilization has been much lesser, so to that extent, that twenty percent will be available on a year on year basis on a full year average. If we are in a position to utilize it fully. Okay, understood. Understood, sir. I will come back to the question queue uh, for more questions. If any, and all the best. In the typical sure. time. Thank you. We we'll take the next question from the line of Mr. Sandeep Dev. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Good evening, uh, sir. My first question is: What is our inventory uh, as of uh, June thirtieth? How many months inventory of cotton are we holding for as of June thirtieth? I've already requested. We don't share that information, so my request will I'll not be in a position to share that. Sorry, um, uh, maybe the price. I'm not asking for the price. Only the amount the of quantity. Quantity. price. Price idea indication. I've already given that we are. It's almost aligned to the market prices as of now. And, uh, okay. And uh, have we imported uh, uh, cotton uh, from uh, overseas? Yeah, we Or have. Are we looking at? And are we looking at importing more going forward? You know, import will always have a 11 percent duty. So it'll never make sense unless. earlier we were importing only uh, for a specific use which where the customer wants the product from those cottons 
But in between, since the Indian cotton was not available, we have imported some imported uh, some cotton from U.S. or other countries as a replacement to the Indian cotton. Uh, but that seems to be a one kind of a pheno uh, phenomena as of now. And we'll keep, we'll keep importing uh, specific uh, cottons for the where the where the customer wants to source those products. Okay, but we have not. So you're saying you have not imported any significant quantity in the last few months? मैंने बहुत ऐसा नहीं कहा मैं ये कह रहा हूँ कि इंडियन कॉटन नहीं अवेलेबल थी उसके अगेंस्ट रिप्लेसमेंट में वी हैव इंपोर्टेड दैट विल बी इंपोर्टिंग ओनली अगेंस्ट स्पेसिफिक नीड ऑफ जान वेयर द कस्टमर वांट्स इट फ्रॉम अ स्पेसिफिक कॉटन अंडरस्टैंड सेकेंडली so why would we so and you would have marked your uh, you know hedging uh, bets as of march 31st prices when you declared the march 31st results so why would you have a loss uh, in the june quarter as well when the new york prices were lower new york prices were lower when the june 30th prices were lower than the march 31st prices no it's not that uh, yeah the march uh, uh, when we had uh, taken it we rolled over those contracts to june so is there a um, significant premium uh, that you are uh, for the 30th june contracts will get over almost uh, near to 22nd 23rd of may so that okay. do the Last uh, days where you have to come out of the option. So if you want to compare these prices, you'll have to look at the prices which were prevailing uh, practically up to about twenty second, twenty third of May. Okay, understood. And uh, lastly, uh, how are the fabric prices behaving? Have you seen significant uh, reduction in fabric prices also? Post uh, the reduction in yarn prices or fabric not prices? Really, more not really, not really. So it is always a, a lag. Whenever the yarn prices are increasing, the fabric will take time to uh, increase the prices, and the vice versa. So as of now, as far as fabric is concerned, though there is some drop, uh, it's not as uh, it's not as sharp as uh, the yarn drops has happened. So the generally the yarn prices will uh, fall in line very. uh closely to the cotton prices where the fabric there will always be some uh, some time lag right so sir you know just looking at this uh, fy23 i guess uh, quarter one was reasonably good uh, quite good i would say if we exclude the hedging losses uh, q2 seems to be a bit uncertain and then i guess a q3 and q4 will be a function of uh, how the crop is and how the demand comes back is my reading correct uh Q2, I will agree with you. Q3, also this one uh, uh, issue which is likely to happen for every spinning mill, that uh, whatever inventories we have, finished goods, WIP, they'll get revalued based upon the new cotton prices. Mm -hmm. So whenever new cotton prices comes in, so there are two kind of uh, valuation which can be a concern. One is uh, I all, am already holding to. the cotton if that's expensive and the new cotton comes at a cheaper price so that's one loss which is likely to happen two whatever finished goods are there because uh, the the inventory is valued at current cost of cotton plus the conversion cost so today suppose theoretically for any mill if the cotton price is at 82000 rupees which is the current price and tomorrow whenever september october depending when you start buying the new cotton Uh, at a at a lower prices so whatever inventories you have normal inventories in the system finished goods i'm talking they'll also get readjusted based upon the new uh, cotton prices as well as the conversion cost so there's uh, some mark to market or uh, some valuation hit which is has to happen uh, by the time we go into the era of a lower cotton prices now whether that happens in september or october i'm not sure that's also likely to happen across chain for everyone but yes quarter 4 onward so quarter 3 onwards on the margin side we may be normalized but depending upon when do we start buying or any textile mill there could be some valuation it quarter 4 should be absolute normal going back to the situation 
right i hope i could make uh, i i hope i could uh, explain the issue no i just correct in the last call you had mentioned that this year you are holding less cotton than usual and yeah. that's why i think the stress is that even though the cotton may not be there but on the finished goods you may still have to take the inventory hit correct. if the prices are lower correct uh, sir uh, lastly from a longer term perspective uh, you know we, india has already signed uh, the uh, agreement with australia and uae and now we are looking at signing with uk hopefully by diwali and then uh, the one with the eu is also uh, underway so from a 2 3 year perspective what kind of uh, uh, growth are you looking at uh, both on the yarn and the fabric side there are three factors where which are four factors which are quite positive for the industry one is which i have already mentioned the china plus factor which includes both the customers uh, concerns about the zingzang as well as their concerns about having the second source of supply that for sure is on track and looks good the second factor all these uh, ftas which are being signed the country will get india will get some advantage compared to the others by way of duty free export accessible to uh, us for those countries which will also increase our share and to that extent it will be positive for the industry third the government is working big way on the on the integrated textile path for the garment team if we can make this as a success as a country because it's not only the spinning which can be or the yarn which can be exported but these countries especially the australia ua they not look at the yarn imports they look at the final uh, uh, product uh, final consumer product uh, imports so if we can create those capacities Uh, successfully and uh, to that extent i think the advantage will be much bigger because then to that extent the demand will be higher in india and we will be in a position to take market share uh, these are all very high cost countries and they'll not be importing yarn for sure so they'll be importing the final products and we have to have those capacities available to us so the government is working on that idea of creating all these uh, uh, mega parks where we are in a position to make it a success i'm sure it's a quite big positive fourth is uh, as you know all of us are aware that our fiber composition is just reverse of what the world markets are so the entire world market is 70% synthetic 30% cotton and we are 30% uh, synthetic 70% cotton so the pli scheme it looks like there's lots of interest shown by the various companies and uh, if we are in a position to Uh, make it successful and our consumption in terms of the uh, in, in terms of synthetic fiber keeps improving i am sure we will become slowly more competitive on the synthetic exports also whether it's yarn or it's uh, the further products and that's another positive where the government has given a big push now up to the companies wherever or whoever wants to take advantage of that and these are couple of good factors also where the opportunity seems to be quite good for indian uh, textile industry okay thank you sir thanks for the detailed answer thank you we take the next question from the line of mr avinit anand from nk global please go ahead sir hello can you hear me Yes, yeah, from uh, yeah, from exports perspective, can you uh, detail region wise where do we export? Uh, you know, in terms of the importance, we export to practically entire world. So the Bangladesh, China, Vietnam, practically these are the countries where lots of uh, export of yarn happens from India. But I think wherever there is a uh, garmenting happening, the India is exporting practically to every country. Of course, Bangladesh in particular has become the biggest. Okay, so so fair to assume that from our uh, Vardhaman's perspective, Bangladesh could be a uh, double-digit number. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, and followed by as you said, Vietnam and China, right? Correct. So, uh, in terms of the spindle capacity, you highlighted, you know, in terms of China, from around under 10 million in the last 10 years, they have come to around 1995. So now India probably is a uh, uh at a pole position in that term right yeah so indian spinning uh, spindle spindle edge capacity today will be in the range of about 50 million and if we look at uh, the new supply in india 
I think uh, overall we will be adding close to about uh, two and a half to three million spindles, three million spindles per year. Out of that, half a million spindles could be for modernization, and another about two and a half million spindles for the expansion. So next three years we could add close to about six seven million capacity, which would be new, and uh, another about one one and a half million uh, modernization. If things goes well. Okay. uh now i know that, you know uh, presently we are in more challenging times and this question might be but if i have to look from ardhman's perspective your capacity uh, in terms of spindle if you say 3 4 3 to 5 years perspective and everything normalizes by 4q of this year where do you see that i am assuming that demand is back and cotton is back to its normalized so numbers our, yeah so our announced numbers are already about 2 and a half lakh spindles we have announced over and above this 100000 spindles which are uh, under implementation so that's our part of uh, our uh, announced policy which is uh, declared and i think to that extent we'll be reaching close to about 1.5 million spindles in next three years four years time okay and and if i have to just add on this uh, what could be a, a for you know a spinner like us along with some fabric that we may what could be a long term margin uh, you know assuming a normalized scenario so we have uh, always taken this view that uh, the margins for the company would be in the range of about 18 to 22% the good year could be 22% or on the towards the higher band band and the bad year could be towards the lower band of course last year was an exception towards the positiveness this year could be an exception towards the negative side okay and lastly from me sir you saw that on 3q there will be a revaluation right uh, because of whatever whether you have cotton or the finished goods oh. large you know finished yeah. goods so, so i don't know quarter 2 or quarter 3 depending upon when we start buying the new cotton yeah so that where does it uh, in terms of accounting that that comes under rr rm right if, if right. there is a revaluation hit or you say it's directly comes no, on the no 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 there's no revaluation hit carry the item it's only whatever uh, is the uh, whatever is the valuation of closing stocks or the finished goods that gets reduced so, so does it uh, does it flow through the through our uh, that uh, current quarters uh, numbers in terms of pnl no it go through the pnl only but it will be okay. indirect going to the cost of raw materials Okay, in that cost of material. Okay, okay. Thanks, sir. Those were my questions. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Manish Godke from HDFC Mutual Funds. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, you said that at current spreads the margins would be negative, right? And yes. you also said that current average inventory procurement price is closer to the current market price. So, can I say at current levels our margins would be negative then? Yes. Okay. Negative or minuscule? I mean, almost, uh, almost negative or minuscule. So, what would be the Q Q two margins? Would it be like, you know, lower single digit or how much it would be? I can't really give you any indication of that, my dear. So, started the quarter. The things are changing very fast, and uh, it will not be prudent for me to give you any idea on what's going to happen because. I'm still not sure. Today the cotton is at eighty thousand. One month back it was hundred thousand. I don't know what will it be next twenty uh, days. But it would be considerably lower than quarter one, right? It could be yes. Okay. And uh, sir, one more thing. This uh, you said that there would be a revaluation in Q3, but your inventory turnover ratio, which is disclosed in the financial year, is uh, financial statement is eighty four days. So that like. If I assume broadly, it's a three months inventory, like raw material or finished goods. So it should finish by October, right? No, no. The finished goods will never be finished. Okay. We will producing and will keep on supplying. So there will be a minimum inventory. Normally, our inventory of finished goods is about twenty twenty five days at any stage. There will always be a part of system, my dear. Okay. Okay. And sir, our top line does it include duty drawback benefits? This two thousand eight hundred crores. Yeah. What would be the quantum of that? Uh, the duty drawback is about one point nine percent on the sale price, and in addition to that, there's a RODP, which is uh, close to about three point 
0.4 percent, but there's a cap of uh, uh, of about 10, 10 and a half rupees a kg on the 100 percent cotton yarns. So that's only for the exports, and the remain the domestic you don't get that. Okay, and uh, sir, in terms of like for yarn and fabric, uh, what would be the share of our top five customers? So we are pretty uh, well organized to that extent. So I think the top five won't won't be more than for as far as spinning is concerned. That won't be more than 18 to 20 percent uh, of our overall volume, maybe less than that. Uh, Mukesh, what will be top five customers in terms of the fabric uh, constituency? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, top five customers in terms of end brand. Uh, our customers are Gap, Target. No, no. What What will be your percentage of the total fabric capacity? Of top five customers, sir. Yeah. I think maybe ten, fifteen percent only. Okay. 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 Maybe, yeah. hmm. Okay, and sir, at like maybe at broader level, like you know, when like when I'm selling a yarn, let's say at hundred bucks, and if I'm converting that into gray fabric and processed fabric, how much additional realization am I getting, like to the index of hundred? Okay, the answer there. Okay. Actually, uh, on the honey, honey, on the uh, gray fabric, in any case, uh, we are not uh, that big into the market. On okay. The, uh, so on the uh, finished fabric, uh, on an index of hundred, it is it is closely little more than two times. More than two times. So, like, uh, it will be hundred percent more. You are saying. So, so if yarn is sold hundred rupees, the gray fabric there will be a further value addition of let's say about fifty rupees, which becomes hundred fifty. For the process, it will be another 50, which becomes a 200 rupees uh, of uh, uh, the total value addition will be almost uh, double. Okay, yeah. and for sir, uh, one last question: for one meter fabric, how much yarn will be used in kg terms? Three, three, three meters per kg of fabric, per kg of yarn. Three meter will uh, three meter fabric for one kg yarn. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Anand Shah from ICICI Prudential Asset Management. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, uh, uh, Yerji. This uh, cotton situation, this is maybe the first time that Indian cotton is more expensive than the international cotton. Just wanted to get some sense of what was so exceptional in this year and whether this can repeat. So there are two exceptions happened in this year. One, our crop was, uh, uh, the the crop uh, got damaged. So the overall crop was less in India. It happens earlier also because the natural product, sometimes the rains are not there or there's some kind of uh, diseases comes to the crop. I think those things have happened earlier also. Yeah. The exception yeah. to this was uh, that there was uh, import duty which was uh, put in by the government in the budget of 2021. So industry came to know in between that the crop is short, but at the same time, because of import duty, it couldn't be imported. Two, the international prices were also increasing in the same way. So there was a concern that you buy cotton today, by the time it gets imported into India because the shipment was taking lots of time. So four months down the line, if you get in India and by the time the prices comes down, where are you going to make a use of this? So these are the three factors. One, the crop got damaged, two, import duty restriction, three, the uh, long uh, period of uh, shipment from outside and very high freights, which was not allowing the normal transits to happen in this period. All three factors came together. So this is a big chaos because of that. As of so are you saying that last time around if such crop damage would have happened, we would have imported cotton and cotton is generally correct. available? Correct, correct. Because by the time the government approved the duty-free import in India, it was in the month of April and May. By that time, mm. the crop was already finished out there because the U.S. crop cycle is same what we have in India. So it starts somewhere in mm. October, finish March. The government allowed the duty-free import till 30th September in the month of May. 
but that time there was no crop available outside so we couldn't import anything then they extended it to october till october also there is no crop other than the australian available and the australian the shipping was not available because of the covid restrictions so the cotton could not be imported one was the cost factor the the custom duty two there was no shipment available in this period outside india okay my last question was you know there was always the inventory in the play right i mean last time also we would have inventory with cci and all that was that also a factor which uh, was not present uh, this time around there is no inventory available because in the initial period we exported lots of cotton when our indian cotton prices got less and uh, there is hardly any quantum available with the with the ginners with the traders or even with the cci so as i mentioned since the overall crop is only about 295 lakh bales or so in india there is a huge acute shortage which is which is which got created in this period okay my last question is there a expectation in terms of uh, what is the acreage and do we have some data uh, what sort of crop can we see this time uh, yes there a study then earlier so there is a 6% increase in the area which is already reported as of now the overall rains are very good in all the cotton areas and it looks like the early estimate of industry is it could go to about 36 million bales or so in this year okay thank you thank you appreciate it thank you we take the next question from the line of mr aman from augmenta research private limited please go ahead sir uh i just thanks for the opportunity so actually i just wanted to assess assess the situation as in like for example during the same time last period how would be the can you give some sense of the order book like how much the 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 order book have would have reduced or how how have been the inquiries why or why because as you said the that the currently the indian prices are high because because of that the indian spinners are at a disadvantage rather than the uh, world spinners so some sense on this uh, on a yoy comparison no 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 i think uh, please try to understand i think this is some what we are saying since the prices of cotton were coming down or prices for commodities were coming down but everyone stopped buying all brands stopped buying so it's not only the cost factor is the second factor so one is the overall brand consumption or the brand was less so the overall demand was also less because of this factor people outside uh, were looking at most of the produce of the so the overall demand outside was less because people were getting concerned on the inflation and on the gas price india is a third factor where we were losing because our cotton It's not that we we don't have the order. Every nobody in the system has got any order. Pakistani, Tamil, or China. The only thing is whatever they are, they are not taking a loss. And if we are selling, we are taking a loss. Otherwise, overall demand, in any case, entire world. I'm sorry Another to interrupt, sir. This is the moderator. I'm sorry to interrupt. So your voice is breaking up. Uh, Ms. Aman, I would request you to please mute your line, sir, while you're not talking, because there's some background disturbance which from your line. Yes, uh, um, sir, yeah, you may so, go ahead. Yeah. So the another factor was last year there was a big uh, supply chain issue for the all the products. Brands were ordering much higher than what they needed because the demand overall was good, and they were looking at the shipping not reaching on time so they were extra booking the all the uh, products including the textiles as the situation of shipping supply chain started improving whatever excess inventories brands had bought they wanted to readjust also in this period so let's say someone bought a one month extra inventory in 2021 which has to be readjusted in this year so as the supply chain was improving prices were coming down so the the brands we started re adjusting to their their uh, order position also which is also one of the reason why the overall demand is subdued or less in this period okay sir and sir just can you uh, can you just again like sorry for the can you just again highlight the difference between this say us cotton price and the indian price what was this uh, what is this currently and what was what is the general average what is the general difference 
Okay. So normally, normally the Indian prices will be about five to seven cents higher than the New York future prices. So if let's say the New York future price is at 80 cents, Indian cotton should be in the range of about 85, maximum 90 cents. In this period, as on today, the New York future is at 90 cents and our cotton is at 137, 138 US cents. So instead of a 8 to 10 cents uh, uh, markup, we are higher by about 45 cents as of now. Okay, okay, so that was useful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aman. We take the next question from the line of Pulkit Singhal from Dalmis Capital Management. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So the first question is, I'm just comparing your commentary, what it was in the post the fourth quarter call. Uh, would you say you're now more optimistic on the prospects uh, versus what it was two, three months earlier and, and see it more like a very short term blip with recovery happening sooner? I was never very pessimistic on the long term, neither on the, my fourth call, a fourth quarter call, or even before, or even today also. My concern was only that the cotton is short in the country, and we will have to pay that cost till the time the new crops come in. Same is the situation. So I don't think any fundamental changes happened in these three months. Yes, of course, the demand is less, but that's true for everyone. It's not only for Indian spinners. So I think as our raw material price will get readjusted to the world markets, after that, I'm quite too optimistic on the overall industry scenario. So the biggest change has been that cotton prices started coming down. I mean, that has been a majorly inflationary trend when we spoke last time. So I would have thought that now with the prices coming down, which was the entire essence of the commentary earlier, uh, this thing should change more for the positive was my expectation. Yeah, so the two factors in between on this one, as the prices started coming down, so everyone is looking at what should be the lowest prices where the normal price should start happening. Since it's been coming down very fast, everyone is on a wait and watch situation. That's one. Number two, unfortunately, the Indian prices have not come down to the extent what the international prices have come down. So in the month of May or June, uh, when we were doing the fourth quarter call, the prices were almost 145, 150 US cents, which has now come down to 90 US cents. Whereas the Indian cotton from 105,000 rupees is still 80, 82,000 rupees. So the prices, of course, has come down. But in India, the drop has not come, uh, uh, you know, in line with the international drop. So that's where my concern for the Indian spinner as of now. The overall ones, our cotton is also comparable to the international markets. I don't think there's really any big challenge. Understood. So last time you also talk about the spread being at 90 cents at that point. How is it that even now the spreads are the same? I mean, the, there's no improvement at all from the 90 cents? So the spread as of now is for the Indian spinner is surely much less than 90 cents. It will be in the range. So the, the, we are talking the spread means the clean cost of cotton versus the yarn prices won't be uh, yeah. more than 50, 55 cents as of now. And whereas when it comes to the all three other countries, which are the biggest spinners, it will be in the range of about 90 cents uh, or so. Right. right. And, and also, if I ask from a slightly longer term uh, purpose, um, I mean, obviously the Indian government is taking a lot of initiatives, whether it be through PLI schemes or this integrated textile parks, they're trying to, you know, make some real efforts on, on creating this as a major hub for manufacturing. And and we are also on a 8,000 crore of net worth with almost, um, you know, zero net debt. So any rethink or thought process on trying to go for any of these schemes or the integrated textile parts kind of finally use our balance sheet, which allows us to do three to 4,000 crores of CAPEX. Um, uh, any thoughts? Uh, so, I mean, we have yet to take a final view whether we really want to big, grow big on the uh, on the governmenting side or not. But yes, once the new schemes come in, we'll definitely evaluate that. The earlier PLI scheme was not making sense to us because one, we are not, that's not our product line as of now. Two, the scheme also envisaged that it has to be a separate company uh, for a turnover of 300 crore. And we, I mean, our feeling is for a, for a 300 crore or some investment, creating those kind of infrastructure and then separating a company, it's a much bigger issue for us. 
anyone who is a smaller or who intends to put in a new capacity it's a beautiful scheme but any large player which is already on the company is almost 9000 crore rupees for a 300 crore 100 crore company to create a separate company and then all the utilities and those kind of things so for vardhaman it was not making sense at all to us both in terms of this uh, uh, requ legal requirement and also that was not our product range at that stage so we have not shown any interest on the PLI scheme, but once the Mitra comes in or those kind of things come in, we'll, we'll evaluate it for sure. Uh, even the, in the integrated textile part, you will give a lot more status um, in thought process uh, for the application. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, yes. And uh, But the challenge is now, we understand the government also wants to put into, into the areas where uh, the more unemployment is there. So we'll have to understand and look at uh, in terms of uh, the overall ecosystem in those states, how does that work? And then could we sir, get some clarity on your thought process here, like how far away is that? I mean, uh, six months, a year, how much time? So once, once they announce finally all their schemes and all the infrastructure will take, but as of now for the next six months, nine months, I don't think there's going to be any major decision from our side in terms of investing into those schemes. Understood. Got it. Thank you. Then all the best. Thank you. We take the last question from the line of Mr. Nikhil Agarwal from VT Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, good, good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. So, like, uh, could you give some any revenue guidance for FI23, FI24? Revenue? Revenue. Yes, sir. So I have already mentioned our capacity utilization is 8-10% lower in spinning and maybe about 10-15% in fabrics. So to that extent, I think it's easy for you to calculate that. Okay, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, so just a clarification, uh, like uh, on the spindle, you, you, got a, you had a capacity expansion of about 1 lakh spindles coming up uh, in August. So is that also on hold or has... Will, no, not has, on hold, but... Fortunately, because of uh, the the non-availability of chips and all those spindles, uh, there's lots of machinery which is still, still not available. So one plant we have already started partially, and I hope that will get completed by 30th September rather than August. The other plant also we are trying to look at maybe September or October, they'll also get uh, installed. Okay, so the the plant which, uh, will, be, which will be starting, what, what is the capacity on that plant? So by I hope by October November the entire hundred thousand spindles would be implemented. Okay, okay, great, sir. And uh, so any uh, so this uh, captive, what is the captive consumption of the base fabric? Is it like completely you use it for manufacturing the process, or do you sell? Are there any say, external sales as well? Uh, the gray fabric we sell, but so normally uh, there is always be you require to have some extra capacity in gray to give a proper service to the customer. And we have about 20-25% extra gray capacity to give the right service on for the processed fabric. So, but wherever, uh, I mean, at the same time that capacity, we normally sell in the markets. So, whatever is the surplus capacity available. So, our average gray sales in the market will be in the range of about 25-30 lakh meters a month. That's okay, case. so... Okay, so and uh, so, what was your like uh, for FI22? Uh, what was your realizations on the yarn and fabric side? Realization means uh, like uh, the total volume uh, sold by the uh, the to the total sales from each segment divided by the total volume sold. The data, I think you can refer, is already a part of our disclosure to the stock exchange. I'm sure I am, for the 31st March, I'm not handily available this data with me. Uh, you could look at or you could speak to our team separately. They can provide you whatever is the information. Okay, okay, sure. And so just one last question. So, so at what spread you said that currently the spreads in India are, are, are about 50 to 55 percent, uh, 50 to 55 cents. So at what spread are you positive, margin positive? So uh, close to about 80 cents, I think we start becoming uh, positive. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, sir. That's it from me. 80 cents, we start becoming positive. Okay, sir. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
That was the last question for the day. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing remarks. Thank you, Novati, sir. Thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. So, our final comment. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. So. I think uh, I've been explaining to all the investors and uh, to quite an extent we are still consistent on the thought process. The medium term still looks very, very good and we were cautious. We were looking at the Indian prices of uh, raw material much higher than the international prices which was giving us a concern when we did the fourth quarter call. And I think slowly that's becoming true and uh, this period we have seen it and another three to four months is going to be a more painful area in my view. So at the same time, we are looking at though we have stopped 8 or 10 percent spenders in last one month or so, but we have also looked at wherever possible uh, how to shift capacity on the alternate products which may, might not be giving us a margin, but at the same time, at least we should be in a position to cover our fixed costs. So very proactively, we are working on those ideas. Uh, and I'm sure as internally, we are very much concerned about the situation and we are looking at whatever best possible in this period to pass through this time so that uh, we can retain the customers, we can sustain them, we keep on working on the efficiencies, both on the jam side as well as fabric side, our teams are working day in, day out. And uh, I'm sure once the raw material abnormality is there, uh, is over, the margin or the overall scenario will be better. And also since loss of spinning capacity is uh, stopped as of now, there's already a vacuum which is getting generated into the system. Hopefully, if things goes well, there could be some possibility that uh, the good demand could come in, but we have to wait and watch. I can't really predict in a precise way as of now. So I'm sure uh, we'll pass through this difficult time uh, also successfully for the next couple of months. And uh, once the once our, our, our prices, raw material prices are internationally competitive, I think we're looking at a much better future. They're still very, very positive on the overall industry scenario. So thank you very much for uh, for attending this call and uh, from the management side, I can assure you whatever is best possible to do, we are all day in day out working on the same. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. On behalf of Bartley Wala and Karani Security, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us. Even now, discuss.